My name is Jomi Kasali. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Impact Today Telecast. Listen, I'm sure you'll be blessed today. Get your family and friends to join you, and I will see you after this time. At, but wait a minute. The Bible says to us in James chapter 1, verse 21, it says, lay aside all naughtiness and superfluity, and it says, receive with meekness the engrafted word. I'm trusting God has received with meekness today. The life will be blessed. Be blessed. I'll see you again. Only the truth can set us free. We must live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. It's a very important passage of scriptures. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. By faith we are saved. By faith we will be sustained. Our salvation will be sustained by faith. Isaiah 51 verse 1 and 2. Hearken to me, you that follow after righteousness. Or you people that go to church. You that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock. Where you come from. Whence you are hewn. Where we caught you out from. Where we hewn you out from. To the whole of the pit, whence you are dogged, they now give us names. Look unto Abraham, your father, to Sarah that bear you. Let me tell you what I did. Number one, I called him alone. Number two, I blessed him alone. Number three, I increased him. Father, we pray that you teach us faith through your son, through your prophet, your servant, Abraham, and our father. We ask you help us to understand faith by studying the life of that great man, Abraham. Help us to develop strong faith. Strong faith. In Jesus' name. Romans chapter 4 will be our passage today that we will dwell on as I consider the subject of faith. As I consider the subject of faith. We are conversing with the song, Father Abraham, as many sons, many sons as Father Abraham. I am one of them. And so are you. Am I right? How many of us here are sons and daughters of Abraham? Yes, we are. Romans chapter 4 tells us a lot about that great man called Abraham. Verse 20 actually is my emphasis, but I have to read a little bit back so you can understand it. Let me read verse 20. Verse 19 and 20 says, please note verse 19 and 20, verses 19 and 20. Being not weak in faith, please note that. Being not weak in faith, which means someone or people can be weak in faith. Being weak in faith is not the absence of faith. I have faith in God, but it is weak. Those not in faith are the unbelievers. Those of us in faith can be strong or weak. So he was considering a guy called Abraham. And he said, Abraham being not weak in faith. Faith in scriptures, when you see it, could mean one of four things. The same Greek word, pistis, is used. P-I-S-T-I-S. The same Greek word, pistis, is used for the four different kinds of usage of faith. Pistis. The first is the saving faith, which is what you are now used to. By faith you are saved. And whenever you see the saving faith in scriptures, he actually explains to us also the living faith. 
The faith you live by, because that's the faith you're saved with. The second is the gift of faith. Mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Gift, gift of faith. Now the gift of faith is not to everybody, but to some. To some he gave gifts. And that is used in the body of Christ to do wonders. Just like the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, the gift of tongues. The, not speaking in tongues, but the gift of tongues. Different from the speaking just for prayer language, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of word of wisdom. Now, the Bible says to some, he gave not to all. But when it comes to saving faith, all that are saved use faith to get saved. And that's a measure of faith we have in Christ that can grow. Now, the third is the fruit of faith, which is mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. That is what all Christians should develop when you walk by the help of the Holy Ghost. That one is called faithfulness. Faithfulness. That's the fruit of faith. When you see an unbeliever and a believer, we expect the character of faithfulness in a believer. Joseph was faithful. You find Daniel was faithful. When unbelievers are disloyal, they expect believers to be faithful. Loyalty, they call it in politics. Faithfulness, we call it in church. You expect people to just be faithful. If you are in Christ and the Holy Ghost is in you, that fruit of faith is called faithfulness. Romans 4 verse 20. Be not weak in faith. Be not what? Weak in faith. You see, verse 20 now says, He staggered not at the promise of God. Hallelujah. I'm coming there. Through unbelief. Staggered not at the promise of God. I'm going to teach something. I'm, I'm going to tell where I'm going to. But was strong in faith. Now look at that. Now you know in verse 19, he said, Be not weak in faith. In verse 20, he was strong in faith. So I'm, I'm teaching you today on how to develop strong faith. Strong faith. But he was strong in faith. So how do I develop strong faith? Strong faith. Wow. Strong faith. So when you look at me, so this man has strong faith. He can develop it. He was not weak. He was strong in faith. He's not weak. He was not, he was not weak here. He was strong in it. How? For you to, for me to do it well, I won't just preach it anyhow. I will take us back to verse 10. So go to Romans 4 verse 10. Because we says, look unto Abraham. So we're looking at Abraham today. We're studying a man's life called Abraham. And I want to pick out a word from verse 10. Romans 4 verse 10. How is it then reckon when he was in circumcision? We were talking about the blessedness of, of, of Abraham's faith. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Verse 11. For he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised. I'm coming there. That he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, the, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Now verse 12 says, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. So the word that I like there is this. Steps. Somebody say steps of faith. Say steps. The steps of that faith of our father Abraham. So I will tell you five steps today. Steps of faith. Step one. Step two. Step three. Step four. And step five. Looking at the life of one man called Abraham. Father Abraham has many sons. Okay, good. What are the steps of faith? Because now what he was saying there is that when God acknowledged and approved Abraham, God did not do it, watch me, when he was circumcised. But when he was uncircumcised, God called Abraham at age 75 in Genesis 11. Genesis 12, Abraham obeyed God. In 11, his father terror hindered him from obeying God. They actually left their fathers, their, their house in awe of the childies. They stopped somewhere 
and they spelled there till the man died. When terror, Abraham's father died, God came to Abraham again. Abraham, I told you to leave, you left. I told you to keep going until I tell you to stop. You stop because your father told you to stop. I said, I'm sorry, Lord. Move. Then he said, I'm moving again. The Bible says, after the death of his father, God came to Abraham again. Meaning God had spoken to him before. Why did you stop obeying me? Move. And then he kept moving. And then chapter 13, he moved. In chapter 12, he found a place called Canaan. God said, stay. Famine, what did he do? He applied for visa to go to Canada. And Abraham left. And he moved to Canada. A land where what? Then God told him, who asked you to go to Canada? Read your Bible. It's your Bible. God told him, the Bible says, he went down south. Every time you leave the place of God's promise to you, you are going down. Chapter 13. The Bible says, go back to the place. He went up to Canaan. Read it. I used those words where, because he went down, he went up. And when he went back up, he stayed back there. Chapter 13, there was growth and increase. Between chapter 12 and chapter 15, 17, go and study everything Abraham did. Because the Bible says, God made him, God accounted his faith when he was uncircumcised. So you have to go, that's why I read it to you. So check his life before circumcision. God approved everything he did when he was uncircumcised. And God said, that's the work of faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he, God, was able to also perform. He has promised, he is able to perform. The first step, faith Starts with a promise. Step one is a promise. There can be no faith without a promise. You, the promise is what you have your faith in. The promise, the promise, the promise. Faith, the first step was the man sat there and God came to him. God said, this year, I will re, you will recover. You will be refreshed. That's a promise. So faith is believing a promise. There can be no faith without a promise. And promise comes in two ways. That word promise is all written, it's all summarized under one popular thing, God's word. What is God's promise to you? What's God's word to you? What's God's promise to you? Depends. Somebody has a promise of lifting, a promise of refreshing, a promise of recovery, a promise of, of whatever, of healing. What's God's promise? And that is what have you heard according to what was spoken the spoken word and the written word. That's how we know the promise. The what? The spoken word and what? The written word. Can I say it again? The spoken word and what? The written word. Read verse 17 and 18. Romans 4. I will show you now. 17 and 18. It is written. It is spoken. Can you see? Verse 17 is what? As it is written. It is written. So you can get the promise of God when you are reading your Bible. Hallelujah. The promise is what is written and what is spoken. Read verse 18. You see, two things. That becomes a promise. What is written and what is spoken. You see, who against hope believed in hope that it might what, become the father of many nations according to that which was. So you have what is what? And what is? Once more. What is? And what is? Once again, what is? And what is? That becomes the Put your hands together for yourself. That's the first step. You cannot believe until you have something written or spoken. So faith starts with a promise. For faith cometh. Not just spoken. You cannot hear until I speak. According to what is spoken. According to what is written. So the word promise means what is what? Written. And what is spoken. So there can be no faith. This is the step of Abraham. First step, Abraham believed what was spoken 
believed according as it is written. Now, that was a first step. You must believe the promise. Tell somebody, believe the promise. Say it again. There can be no faith without a promise. Verse 13. There can be no faith without a promise. There can be no faith. So you must hold on to that promise as personal, internalize it. This is the promise of God to me. The Bible says to us in Corinthians, the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. Yea means yes. Amen means so be it. Yea and amen. We need to come back again and start believing. Step two. Step two. After the promise comes. The second step is to now believe this word. The believing is where the problem is. The believing is what the problem is. I'll tell you why that's a problem. Can I tell you why? What or who makes a difference in believing? Many of us try to believe the word. I'm not a speaker. Most people believe the speaker and not the word. If Ali Kotangote comes here today and he tells you all, I like this church, I want to rebuild it for you. Do you believe he's able to do it? Do you believe he's able to do it? Financially capable? Would you doubt that? Is it the word you are believing or the person? If Kule Shoibo stands here and says, I like this church, I will repeat it for you. Why are you laughing? Kule, they doubt you. The Holy Ghost will make you a great man. Kule, stand up and say, will you believe the speaker? Or the, the same word. Different responses. Yes or no? So the question is this. Who do we believe? This telecast was made possible by partners of Abacot Ministries International. If you would like to be a partner, kindly visit www.yamikasali.com forward slash become a partner. Fill in the form and you will receive a partner's gift. Thank you for watching Impact Today. Thank you for watching Impact Today. I hope you have been blessed by today's message. Listen to me. As you know, I love feedback a lot. I'd love to hear from you. I would appreciate it. If you have questions, you have comments, you like to let me know how you've been blessed today. My email address is right now on the screen. Please email me directly. Send me a mail and I'd like to hear from you personally. We also have trained counselors behind the scenes right now waiting to hear and to pray with you. Should you have the prayer request, the prayer point, let us would like to pray with you. All you have to do is call the number on your screen right now. If you're watching me right now, you want to do something else beyond getting in touch with us, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, that will gladden my heart and that will make God happy. Can you do me a favor? Close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. If you want to give your life to Christ, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today to surrender my life to you, to make you Lord and Master and Savior of my soul. Lord, help me. Take me and wash me clean with your blood and sanctify my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Listen, we have trained counselors right now, like I said earlier on, waiting to lead you through your faith journey. They would like to hear from you as well. Pick and call the numbers right now. Just dial those numbers and you will indeed hear from us. We also have a salvation kit. That's meant for those who give their life to Christ and Christ alone. We have a salvation gift pack. We would like to rush them to your place. You may need to drop to, for us your number, your address, so we can reach you. My partners would love to also hear from you. We have many churches across the street that you can also worship in. Go look for a Bible-believing church. If you gave your life to Christ and you start your journey of faith. Thank you once again for being out there. I'll see you again on this channel same time next week. Bye-bye and God bless. Till I see you, continue to make an impact in your community and your society.